One question I get a lot, how do I find my voice, my true sound, my real tone? Now, let me say that if the sound is coming from your mouth, it's yours. You own it. There is no official sound that is correct, but there is healthy and unhealthy, free and not free. The human voice is capable of a wide array of tones and textures. And as long as you produce them healthily, rasp, screaming, rounded operatic sounds, everything is fair game. But what a lot of you are experiencing when you come to me is a lack of your full resonance. And that means because of constrictions in your throat, it's not that you're not hearing your true voice, but you're not hearing your whole voice. And when you hear your whole voice, you're likely to be much more satisfied and you will hear it as your true sound. It'll give you all of the resonance and all of the color that you're capable of wielding. And with that, you can do whatever you wish to do artistically. To be more specific, if your throat is overly constricted, or even a little constricted really, you can end up sounding nasal, you can sound muddy, you can sound really, really flat, or you can sound very harsh, undesirably harsh. And it's really imperative that we get this to let go in order for you to experience not only a difference in sound, but a substantial difference in freedom. To give you a very practical real life example, uh, inspired by a recent student. If I were to sing, baby tonight, I'm blowing up your line, I got. Is that my voice? It is, but it's my voice weighted down by all kind of neck pressure. So instead of, I'm blowing up, if I let go, I'm blowing up your line, I got you on my mind. Even if you don't like my voice, it's much more resonant. You're hearing more of me. And so whether you like it or you don't, that's what it is. As opposed to, eh, ah, uh, do you hear the difference? Baby tonight, baby tonight. Okay, you get the idea? So from here, let me show you three tips on how you can make that happen for you and reveal your real instrument. Tip number one is don't lock your abs. It really vexes me that so many voice teachers purposefully encourage their students to lock up rigidly at the abdominal area. This locks your throat. <laughs> There's so much evidence to support the notion that locking the abs contributes to everything from nodules to even dysphonia. Letting go of your abdomen will let go of so much vocal weight up here, that heavy sensation of the voice being just weighted down. So this is easy. Place a hand on your abdomen and just do it like a trill. Your abs should move. Your abdomen should move. A, a mobile abdomen is a released one. So if it locks tight, then it won't do anything. It'll stay still. You should be able to feel it release a little bit when you inhale and it should move inward gradually as you talk or as you sing, okay? Like that. So if we apply this to our intro example, and that baby tonight, part of it is mental, I'm gonna get into that a little later, because part of that, sometimes <laughs> you're aiming for a certain sound that is the wrong sound for you, but sticking to the physical component for now. If you're getting baby tonight, and you feel your abs locking up, you can trill the melody, Focus on letting the abdomen move. It should move. When you inhale, it moves outward. When you exhale or make sound, which is exhaling, you're gonna slowly feel it move inward. It's not something you should force. I'm not asking you to pull your stomach in. I'm asking you to let go enough to allow your abdomen to move inward. So it's not, baby, tonight. When you lock your abs, you lock yourself in chest voice. And this is the, the horrible illusion that nature casts that makes locking the abs so appealing. If you tighten your abs, it can make your voice bigger. It will also make your voice tighter and it will trap you in one register of your voice and it will over time weaken your instrument. If you let go, baby, to, baby tonight versus baby tonight, I'm blowing up your line. I got you on my mind. Even without vibrato, even without any fancy riffs or runs, the tonal quality is remarkably different and you get to hear me and you will get to hear you. Practice letting go. And you might be surprised on the high notes, on that riff or run, there may be a certain section of the song that locks you up more than another. But if you're tight here, check your abdomen. I know it's all the way down here, your throat's up here, but they are connected. Your body is, <laughs> they're not separate. They might seem like they're far away, but the effects, very close together. 
Sometimes letting go of the abdomen can be tough or even letting go of the throat can be tough because it can feel like I'm asking you to drive without the steering wheel. Like I'm saying, take your hands off, but drive around. Because we do need some kind of place to grab or to lean on to. And this concept has been understood for literally hundreds of years. Um, this is the thing, you do have to grab somewhere. Some part of your body has to grab. Now we go into great detail on this concept and how to properly do it in my phase one and phase two programs, available, available at aapproach.com. Um, but, had to do the plug, I had to, it's the trade-off. But what I can give you for free, um, something that you can really use, is that it's okay to feel your body working, it just shouldn't lock. And a good way to feel this is you do a gentle, gentle, a gentle cough. If you do a <coughs> you'll feel your body kind of respond to that. Your abdomen will engage, your body will kind of lock. But a, maybe a, a more fluid version would be a laugh, and this might feel weird to just laugh spontaneously with no authentic motivation. But if you just kind of <laughs> you'll feel, even though it's kind of jerky in the movement, your body, <laughs> I feel my back muscles, I feel my rib cage muscles, I feel my abdomen, they're all moving. They're kind of grabbing at that sound. We don't want the grab to happen up here. Stuff can work, it just shouldn't lock, okay? There's one exception to that rule that we talk about in the program, but for now, nothing here should lock, okay? So that being said, practice laughing <laughs> through your range and feel your body engage. And when you think you've got that, go back to the trill. You'll feel your, your belly moving in, but other stuff can work. Your whole torso is fair game. This is what we call body connection, singing with a connection to the body. That was redundant. But so that this doesn't have to work. And I know this is part of your body, but we ain't body, okay? So not body. You got me? And that's going to make your singing much freer and much healthier when these bigger, stronger muscles of your respiratory postural system can support your tone as opposed to these muscles up here. And we, you don't have to be a vocal coach to know that that feels uncomfortable and it causes problems, okay? So try to stimulate the feeling with a laugh or a gentle cough and then try to sustain that via a trill. See if you can feel your body working when you do that. So then when you go to, I'm blowing up your line, you're gonna be tired of that line after a little while, but it's, you can feel a little bit of a gentle, and again, it's not a, uh, it's not a lock, but I feel, I got you on my mind. I feel muscles working in here, and this gets to be relaxed, okay? Play with it, it doesn't have to be this song, I just use it because my student did it recently, but you can sing whatever the hell you want, I don't, I don't care. So, but the concept remains the same. Wake these muscles up. If you don't feel this working, try to consciously let go of your, this whole area, this neck, trap, shoulder area, try to consciously let go. You have so much more control of your body than you might think you have. So, consciously, your body might do knee-jerk reactions, but you have the final say. You can make them let go. And when you fake laugh <laughs> or, you know, gently cough, I don't recommend doing this one too much, but when you, <laughs> but you can feel it a little better sometimes. Um, you should feel stuff here work. Pectoral area, abdominal area, back, rib cage, side ribs, all that stuff is good. Pelvic floor, even your buttocks a little bit. And some of the stuff I'm getting into is a little advanced. Again, Phase one, phase two, aapproach.com, or you can work with me one-on-one, -on -one, aapproach.com. I'll probably throw in one more plug before we're done, but <laughs> you're almost there. Point number three is perhaps the most important aspect of finding your own voice. And in the example I gave you of my student from a, just a few days ago, we had to focus on this one a lot. Part of the reason why he was singing the way he was singing and why you may be having the problems you're having is that... Um, Let's call him James. <laughs> James, like me, is by nature a low voice type. Our voices are naturally rich and heavy and kind of dark. And he wanted to sing just like, is it Chris Brown? Um, and he, so in order to try to attain that sound, not only were there physical things happening, but he was purposefully pinching and trying to squeeze and contort his voice into this. So I'm gonna tell you something I tell all my clients. We don't curse the violin for not being a trumpet and vice versa. So if you have a trumpet of a voice, you can't play it like a violin. If you have a cello voice, you can't play it like a piccolo. 
We're different and your uniqueness is part of the gift. Some of you are so married to this ideal of sound that's based upon whoever your favorite sing singer or singers are. And you've got to let that go. It's like trying to fit into somebody else's clothes and they're way too big or they're way too small. Their clothes don't fit you. Get your own damn clothes. So you have to find your voice. And the crust, the foundation of your real voice is in your speaking voice. Now, before you balk at that, <laughs> Your speaking voice is capable of a wide array of tones and textures too. In New Orleans, where I'm from, you might have heard me say this before. I hear, yeah, that ain't even know. I don't even, but you know, especially my thing about my uncle Bruce. Like I could hear him go all over the place with his voice. Especially if you watch, if you if you and your friends watch a sporting event. If you're angry, you speak differently than when you're happy. It's you know, oh, yeah, I can't even. You know, we do all these things. So when I say use your speaking voice, I don't mean that it has to be a monotone staying. No, your, your voice is quite expressive. And if you tap into your speaking voice, you can draw from all those inflections and intonations therein. So if I say, baby tonight, that's so off base from where I'm naturally inclined to go. If I say, baby tonight, I'm blowing up your line. I've got you on my mind. If I'm just speaking in a relaxed way, but still with some emotional energy, um, I'm blowing up your line. I'm blowing up your line. I got you on my mind. I've got you on my mind. I got you on my mind. Whatever. So it, it's elongated speaking. Don't try to make it. Don't try to make it. <laughs> don't try to make your singing voice. And you're not Mariah Carey. You're not Ed Sheeran. That's okay. That's so okay. You're you. You can't be them and they can't be you. That's not a better or worse kind of thing. It's just different and learn to welcome that. Their natural gold nuggets or superpowers that any vocalist I've ever worked with has that special thing that they can do. I trained David Corey, X Factor finalist, saying the Coca-Cola FIFA Cup thing. Um, he can scream, like he can go, and he can really do it. Um, Brian Terrell Clark has this beastly mix, this belt mix that he can do. He played Marvin Gaye, Motown the Musical. Um, as you guys know, you saw the head voice falsetto video, got a lot of comments on that. My head voice, I have a lot of control over that. Everybody has their like, their bailiwick, their like, their vocal superpower. Doesn't mean you can't do other things, but the thing that you're trying to suppress, maybe a uniqueness in your tone, maybe it's, maybe it's really light or really dark or, or something, um, the thing you're running away from might be exactly what makes you famous or what makes you special or what touches someone's heart. So don't shy away from that. And if you have a problem with your speaking voice, then you might need to do some work. Your speaking voice is your singing voice. If your speaking voice is tight and nasal, apply these same techniques from one and two to your speaking voice. If your speaking voice is really, really, especially if you go hoarse from speaking for long amounts of time, or if you feel tight or fatigued after speaking, you got some speaking voice issues. Apply this to your speaking voice. But a healthy speaking voice will yield a healthy singing voice. And again, the singing voice is capable of a wide array of tones and textures. So you don't have to be stuck there. You can do raspy, you can do breathy, you can do all kinds of things, but start there as your base. And that will help you to find your true instrument. Of course, there's much more to this, too much to put in a single YouTube video, even if I tried. But you can go to www. You don't have to say the W's, why am I doing that? But you can go to aapproach.com to book a one on one lesson with me, Skype, FaceTime, anywhere in the world. Or if you're in the DC area, you can work with me in person. Or if you're in New York, I'm in New York a lot, as some of you know. You can work with me. Just email my people, click the link in the info box, or just go right to the site. I have video series that you can purchase that are awesome, and you can send video clips and we give you feedback, me and my team. Um, aapproach.com. I hope this helps, and happy singing. Till next time, peace.